you see that among disciples of any guru, some are very close, some are very distant, some have a very awe and reverence, folding hands, Jai Gurudev, yes Gurudev. And some are very close to the Gurudev. So in uh, Chanaka Pandit, he says about Niti Shastra, he said, he said there are three, three personalities you should not get too close to and too far from. Uh, or three entities or objects. Should not get too close or be too far away from. Guru, king, and fire. Fire, you know fire? Agni. If you get too close to the fire, you burn up. <laughs> if you have, you're wearing rayon, you're wearing a rayon sari or something, it's, it's not silk. If it's rayon or nylon or dacron or whatever, you know, some chemical. You get near a big fire, there's a big fire. You catch this fire on your sari and woof! Haribo! So too close to the fire. If you're wearing silk, it doesn't burn. So usually when ladies, they do uh, cooking in a deity kitchen. In the West, they wear silk. Silk sari or silk, silk choli, whatever. If you put it in a flame, you, you can hold a match to it and just goes little... There, nowhere, no, just nowhere. You know that? Or wool. When you're cooking, you know, this gas stove, you know, you have your things like this and get there, you can get burn up, you know, it's very, da- very dangerous. And besides, silk is pure. Silk and wool. Now, the three persons, so the fire, you get too close, you get burned. If you're too far away, you get cold. Can't cook your, can't cook your food. So fire has, has power. In other words, Fire is very powerful, and you have to be in the right proximity to get the advantage. The king, if you're too close to the king, say, oh, king, your wife looks so stupid, you know? Ha, 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 you think my wife looks stupid? <laughs> off with the head. So if you get too close to the king, you make an insult, then it'll cut your head off. And if you're too far and you have no protection, you go way out in the jungle and you expect the king to protect you. Oh, king, protect me. I can't even hear you. So you should always stay in a proper distance. Then the third person is the guru. You get too familiar and too close, you make up a rod. Mad ele- it's called mad elephant offense. If you're too far you, you, and you, you forget the guru, then you forget his instructions and, and you don't communicate and you have no relationship and no seva, then you lose the grace. You may fall in maya. So we shouldn't be very far from Guru and his teachings and instructions and association. And we should be careful when we, we're very close, closely associated with Guru. So those disciples that do have a very personal and close relationship with Guru, they have to really be on their toes. And they have to always be remembering who is the Guru, what is his identity, how he's transcendental, how he represent, he's a representative of God. Even when he's old and the disciples cleaning the stool of the Guru or he's cleaning... So many things. Just like when Madhavendra Puri was leaving his body, he was a great saint, a great, great, great saint in the Madhva Sampradaya, Madhavendra Puri. Then one of his disciples, Ishvara Puri, was taking care of him. Ishvara Puri was the Diksha Guru of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Right? Ishvara Puri. So he was taking care of his guru, and his guru's body was not working well, and urine and stool and here and there and, and cooking and all these things, moving him, taking him for latrine. And, but he did very perfect service and I always remember that I'm serving God's representative. He is Sakshat Hari. He never thought any mundane thoughts. So he got the full blessings of his guru. He got the full blessings of Ishwar Puri. Now another disciple, his name was Ramachandra Puri. He's in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Ramachandra Puri was also associating with his guru at the end of his life when his guru was dying. He was instructing his guru. And I told you before that the disciple, it's an offense if the disciple tries to show his knowledge in front of the guru, or tries to correct the guru, or tell the guru what to do, or instruct the guru. That's a big offense as a disciple. Ramachandra Puri was instructing his guru who was leaving his world, and closing up his activities, you know, disappearing, dying, whatever. He was telling him, he said, Oh, why, why are you praying like this? Why, why are you chanting like this? You're saying like this. Madhavendra Puri was reciting a very beautiful verse when he was leaving his body. Because Madhavendra Puri was a great devotee of Radharani. 
although he appeared, apparently, although his name was Puri, his title was Puri because he took sannyas. But there's some debate about whether Madhavendra Puri was, a, was in Madhva Sampradaya or not, because no one in the Madhva Sampradaya has the name Puri. But what many people, what many devotees argue, or they say, is that we, can't, we don't know the history. We don't know the exact history of this person because it's long ago. But Madhavendra Puri, who is the guru of Ishra Puri, who is the guru of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Madhavendra Puri is the guru of Advaita Charya, uh, Sri Advaita Charya Prabhu, and also Nityananda Prabhu. So generally it's said he's a member of the Madhva Sampradaya, Madhva Brahma Sampradaya. But there's some debate about that. So generally what they say is, well, we don't know, but it, it's a good chance that if we, since he's, he's connected, he's said to be connected with Madhva Sampradaya, he, maybe he took Diksha, he took his Gopal Matra Diksha, Guru Diksha from a guru in Madhva Sampradaya, but later he took sannyas. Just like Vishwambar. Vishwambar, Nimai Pandit, he took Diksha from, from Ishra Puri. And then later he took sannyas from Keshava Bharti. Keshava Bharti was a Mayavadi sannyas. So Lord Chaitanya took sannyas from a Mayavadi. So that's, that's how they say it, that maybe he, he took sannyas because it was popular. A thousand years ago, whenever Madhavendra Puri lived, most most devotees that were sannyasis were Advaitins or Mayavadis. So if you wanted to take sannyas, you would have to take over there. So that's what they say. But when he was leaving his body, although he's in Madhva Sampradaya, and they worship Krishna, Udupi Krishna, and Vaikuntha, and Dasyarati, that's their conception, the Madhvas. But he was chanting Radhe Radhe. He was, he was, he was a great Radharani Bhakta. So they say that Radharani Bhakti and Radha Dasyam and the mood of serving Radharani, it, it, it comes from Madhavendra Puri. So Madhavendra Puri gave that same mood of Radha Dasyam and the service of Radharani and Radharani's glories. Madhavendra Puri gave it to Ishwar Puri, his disciple, and Ishwar Puri gave it to Mahaprabhu. Of course, Mahaprabhu is Radha and Krishna, but it's also told like this. So at the end of his life, he kept repeating this mantra over and over again. He was crying. He was crying this out because he was totally identifying with the bhav, the feelings, the sentiments, bhav, and heart of Shimati Radharani when Krishna went to Mathura. Krishna left Radharani when he was 11 years old, and he went to Mathura, and he stayed there for 17 years. Then he went to to uh, Dwarka, and he stayed 100 years. Krishna lived 125 years. 11 years in Braj and about 17 years, Gurudev said, 17 years or so, in uh, 15 years, something, he told me, 15 years or so he stayed in Mathura. So that's 25, then 100 years in, in Dwarka. So when, he, when Krishna went to Mathura, Radharani was so desperate and so, so much unhappy. So one day she cried out, and this is what he was praying, this is what he was crying out. This is his own prayer. It's repeated in Chaitanya uh, Charitamrita, Madhya Lila, and also in Rupa Goswami's Padyavali. He quotes it. Ai dina diarda natahe, matura natha kadava lokyase, ridiyam twad aloka kattaram, dayata brahmyati kim karomyaham, kim karomyaham. What can I do? Oh, Radharani cries out. Oh, you, whose heart is most merciful to the wretched, oh, my master, oh, Lord of Matura, when will I see you again, oh, Lord of my life? Because I cannot see you, my heart is agitated and breaking apart. What shall I do now? So he was saying this over and over again. Oh, compassionate Lord, now you're the Lord of Matura. Before you were the Lord of my heart, but without seeing you, my heart is breaking. Aloka, kataram. Kataram means ridaya kataram. means my heart is so much aggrieved and so much agitated and so much disturbed without seeing you. In this condition, oh my beloved, dayate brahmiti kim karomiham. What can I do? Where can I go? Who can I speak to? How can I solace myself? I have no comfort. So he's in this great mood of Radharani's viraha, separation, crying. Totally in. Prema, when he's leaving his body. And Ramachandra is saying, Gurudev, 
You should fix your mind on Brahman. Fix your mind on Brahman. You're about to leave your body. Why, why are you chanting this prayer? Radharani is separated from Krishna. This is not right. So when Madhavanjur Puri heard, I said, get out from here. Just leave. If I, if I die, if I leave my body seeing your face, it will be most inauspicious. Just go from here. So obviously he made a big offense to his Gurudev. That was a big breach of Maryada behavior. It's called Maryada Vyatikara. Mar Maryada, Maryada Vyatikaram means to break Maryada, to, to misbehave, to, to show the wrong behavior. He tried to instruct his Gurudev. Completely crazy instruction. And because of that big offense he made, then Ramchandra went to Puri and he offended the Aryan Vaishnava devotees of Lord Chaitanya. And then he met Lord Chaitanya and said, Ah, Lord Chaitanya, I see here in this Gambira so many ants are crawling everywhere. I have, oh, that means you're just getting all Jagannath Mahaprasad. You're just eating sweets all day and night. What kind of bogus sannyasi are you? He said, You're a bogus sannyasi. And, Lord, and then Lord Chaitanya, when he heard that, he started fasting. He just started fat. He gave up all eating of any Jagannath Mahaprasadam, and he stopped accepting any invitations to anyone's house. And then Ramachandra left there. And then all the devotees, they said, Oh, Lord Chaitanya, is not, he's not accepting invitations to any Brahmin's house for lunch. He hasn't taken a morsel of Jagannath Mahaprasadam. He's fasting because of this great Aparati Ramachandra. He's feeling so bad. He's fasting. Totally not eating anything. So then all the, to all the devotees in Puri, they started fasting also. And they said, Lord Chaitanya, he's not Parati. He offended his guru. He offended all the Vaishnavas here. He's, that's his nature. He's like that. Wherever he goes, he offends the devotees. Why are you taking it so seriously? So please, you eat again. So then Lord Chaitanya started eating again. But then Ramachandra Puri, he got leprosy. Or we don't know what happened to him. He, very unfortunate situation. 